All right, quiz tomorrow is on sections 5.5 and 5.6. Quiz is going to be 12 questions. And none of those questions are going to ask about domain. Yeah, so it'll ask you to add f plus g and then find f plus g of negative 5, but just not the domain. So you can just ignore the domain parts for now. All right, so let's look at a. So we have to find f plus g of x. So f plus g means that we add our two functions together. So we take function f and take function g and add them. So 3x squared plus 1 plus x plus 4. So we just add our two functions together, combine our like terms. So I have 3x squared plus x plus 5 because I can combine the 1 and the 4. So this would be my f plus g of x. All right, I'm going to go to the one right below it. So let's find f plus g of negative 5. So it just means we need to take negative 5 and plug it into the x's in this question. So it's 3 times negative 5 squared plus negative 5 plus 5. So what would I do first here? I can cancel out the fives. That would work. You want to kind of stick to PEMDAS first. So I would do the exponent first. So what's negative 5 squared? Positive 25. And 3 times 25? 75. 75. So f plus g of negative 5. So when we plug negative 5 into our adding function here, we get 75. Also, for the quiz tomorrow, you need a calculator. So it has to be a normal calculator. No graphing calculators. Don't forget your calculator for tomorrow. All right, next let's look at B. So here we want to find F minus G. So we start with our function F, which is 3X squared plus 1. And we are subtracting our function G. We're subtracting the entire function G, so make sure you put it in parentheses. So minus X plus 4. What would I do next? Distribute. Distribute. So that minus gets distributed to everything behind it. So this turns into 3x squared plus 1 minus x minus 4. What should I do next? Combine like terms, and I'll put it in standard form too. So 3x squared minus x. What's negative 1 minus 4? Minus 3. All right, now going right below it, when it says find f minus g of negative 5, what do I need to do? Plug in the negative 5 into the x's in that question that I just found. So I have 3 times negative 5 squared minus negative 5 minus 3. What would I do first here? The exponent. What's negative 5 squared? 25. 25. What is that? minus a negative turn into a plus so this would be 3 times 25 plus 5 minus 3 what would we do next which is 75. so 75 plus 5 would be an awesome so we got 77 here let's take a look at number two so here we have to find what does this mean What's it asking? Multiply f times g. We don't have to worry about the domain for now, so we can cross it off. So we're just multiplying f times g. So we have 2 times the square root of 3 minus x times 4, so times g, times the cubed root of 3 minus x. Now all of these things are being multiplied together. So is there anything that I can actually combine to multiply? The 2 and the 4. So that would be an 8. So that's just going to stay out front. Now what about the radicals? Can I combine those together? Why not? 
We have the same base, so we actually can. Even though one is the, just the square root, the other one's the cubed root, the bases are the same, the inside parts. So I'm going to change it to be exponents because I know how to combine my exponents together. So this would be 3 times negative x to the 1 half power times 3 minus x to the 1 third power. So if my bases are the same, how can I combine them together? Add what? Add the exponents. So this turns into just 1, 3 minus x to the power of 1 half plus 1 third. So when we combine it together, it's just one of them. And then we add the exponents. So let's add our fractions here. What do I need in order to combine fractions? Common denominator. common denominator. What would my common denominator be here? Six. Six. So what do I have to multiply times two to make it three? So I'm multiplying the top and the bottom by three, so it turns into three over six. What do I have to multiply to the one-third to get that to have a denominator of six? Two. So this would change into two over six. Now we add our numerators together. So this would be 3 minus x to what power? To the 5 6 power. And that 8 just stays out front. So this is what we get when we multiply them together, and it's in simplest form. So if your bases are the same and you're multiplying, you add the exponents to combine. So or if you wanted to, you could put it back into a radical. It would be 8. What would my index be? Six, because my denominator here is six, so that would be the index. So the sixth root of three minus x to the fifth power. Either way it works. All right. Next, it asks us to find f times g of two. So what would I do? So we're plugging in two into the x in the equation that we just found there. So I have 8 times 3 minus 2 to the 5 6th power. What would I have to do first? Do the parentheses first, PEMDAS. So 3 minus 2 would be 1. What is 1 to the 5 6th power? 1. So this would be 8 times 1, which is 8. Awesome. All right, let's look at B. So here we are dividing. So we start with, which one goes on top? F, because it's F over G, F divided by G. So 2 square root 3 minus X over 4 cubed root 3 minus X. So we have the same base, just like what we did when multiplying. I'm going to change these to be exponents to so see it a little bit better. So 2 times 3 minus x to what power? 1 half power. Square root means 1 half power. What does the cubed root get changed into? The cubed root. 1 third power. So we can divide our numbers here or simplify. What's... 2 over 4 simplify to? 1 half. 1 over 2. Perfect. We just divide both of them by 2. Simplify the fraction. Now with my 3 minus x, can I combine these together? How? They're the same base, so yes. How do I combine them together? Subtracting the exponents. Since we're dividing, we subtract the exponents. So 3 minus x to the 1 half power minus 1 third. So we're doing the same thing we just did before. How do I subtract fractions? Need a common denominator. So what's my common denominator going to be here? 6. So I'm going to change this to be... 3 over 6, because I'm multiplying the top and the bottom by 2. Change this one to be 2 over 6, because I'm multiplying the top and the bottom by 2. 
first one got multiplied by three, second one by two. So this would be one half to the three minus x to what power? One sixth, perfect. That would be the final answer. That's as simplified as we can go. For the next part of this question, it asks for f divided by g of 2. So I'm going to plug 2 into x. So 1 half times 3 minus 2 to the 1 sixth power. So 1 half. What's 3 minus 2? 1. So 1 to the 1 sixth power. What is 1 to the 1 sixth power? 1. So this would just be? 1 times 1 half, which is 1 half. All right, let's look at the next one. So we're finding f divided by g. So which one's going to go on top? f goes on top. 2x to the 3 halves power. Divided by g. So x to the 1 fourth. All right, can I combine these together? Yes, my bases are the same. I have x and x, so we can combine them. If I'm dividing, how would I combine them? Subtract the exponents. So this 2 just stays out front, and it would be x to the 3 halves minus 1 fourth, top minus bottom. All right, so now what do I need to subtract fractions? Common denominator, what is my common denominator going to be? Four. Four. So what do I have to multiply to the first fraction? Two. Two. So this turns into? Six, six over four. Five, four. Perfect. So it would be two times x to what power? Five-fourths Five power. We can just leave it like that. Next part of this question says, evaluate when x is 81. What does that mean that I need to do? Plug the 81 into x. So it could be written like this, where it says x is equal to 81, or it could be written like we had in the last one, where it was f divided by g of 81. These mean the same thing. So just ask me to plug 81 into x. So I have 2 times 81 to the 5 fourths power. What do I have to do first? Eighty-one to the five fourths power. So, what would my index be? Four. So, I have the fourth root of eighty-one to the fifth power. Some calculators will let you put this into the calculator right off the bat. How you would do that? is you click 81. Most calculators have this up arrow button, so that means that you're doing an exponent. And then you would do 5 divided by 4. But put it in parentheses so it knows that it's to the 5 fourths power. If you have questions on how to do this in your specific calculator, ask me when we're done. Because I think knowing this will be helpful. It'll just pop out the answer right away. We could always do it by hand. So what are two factors of 81? 9 and 9. Two factors of 9? 3 and 3. So I'm circling groups of 4. So what comes to the outside? 3. So 2 times 3 to the 5th power. What's 3 to the 5th power? 243. So again, knowing how to do this in the calculator would be super helpful. That way you can just throw that into the calculator and not worry about the calculations part. The calculator would do it for you. 
So if you have a question on how to put this in the calculator, ask me when we're done with the review. I'll walk you through it so everybody knows how to use their own calculator. So question 4a, you're finding the inverse of our function. What do I need to do first to find the inverse? Make the x, y, and the y, x. So f of x turns into x, and x turns into y. So x is equal to negative 1 half times y plus 10. So when we're finding the inverse, we're doing PEMDAS but backwards. We start with addition or subtraction, then go to multiplication, then do the parentheses. So it's PEMDAS backwards. So what would I have to move first here? The 10. So since I'm adding 10, I'm going to do the opposite and subtract 10 to move it to the other side. So x minus 10 is equal to negative 1 half y. What should I do next? Divide what? Divide negative 1 half. Or what else could I do? Multiply everything times negative 2. Because dividing by negative one half is the same thing as multiplying by negative two. So it just may be easier to multiply everything times negative two. So this turns into negative two x. What's negative 10 times negative two? So plus 20 and then negative one half times negative two cancels. Am I done here? What am I missing? The little negative one symbol, that inverse symbol on the y. Doesn't matter. You could put y equals here. Doesn't matter. You could put it in the front or the back, whatever you like. That's fine too. As long as you have it there. Let's look at B. All right, what should I do first? Split the x and y. So the f of x turns into x and the x turns into y. Now I need to solve for y. So what should I do first? Add the 9. So remember, we're doing PEMDAS backwards. So you have to do the addition or subtraction first. So x plus 9 is equal to negative y cubed. What do I need to do next? Perfect. We're going to divide everything by negative 1. So we just flip the signs of everything. So this turns into a negative x minus 9. And now it's a positive y to the third power. Right now, how do I get rid of that cubed? It's not, we're not multiplying the three times y, it's y to the third power. Cube root, both sides. Whatever the exponent is, that needs to be our index. We take the cubed root of both sides. So it cancels out there. So this is y is equal to the cubed root of negative x minus 9. What am I missing? The negative 1 symbol on the y. The inverse symbol there. Any questions? All right, let's look at C. So first thing we want to do is flip the x and y. So make the f of x, x, and the x, y. So x is equal to y plus 5 cubed. What do I need to do first here? Cube root both sides. We have to get rid of those parentheses before I can subtract the five. So before I can touch anything inside here, I need to get rid of that cubed root. So we get rid of the cubed root by cubing both sides. Or we get rid of the cube power by cube rooting both sides. So we have the cubed root of x and it cancels out here. So it's equal to y plus that. Everybody good with that step? So we took the cube root of both sides, cancel out with the third power. 
What do I do next? Subtract five. Awesome. Subtract 5. Does the 5 go inside that radical there? No. no. It's the last thing that's happening, so it has to stay outside the radical. So minus 5, just on the outside. That's equal to y. And then the very, very last step is we just need to name our inverse. So we got to put this inverse symbol on the y. Any questions here? All right, next let's look at D. So first thing I want to do is switch my x and y. So I'm making f of x, x, and x, y. So I have x is equal to 3 times the square root of y plus 5. What do I have to do first? Move the 5. So I'm going to subtract 5. So x minus 5 is equal to 3 square root y. What do I do next? Divide by 3. So I'm dividing both sides by 3. It doesn't simplify with the x or the negative 5, so I'm just going to leave it as a fraction here. So x minus 5 over 3. What should I do next? Perfect. I'm going to square both sides to get rid of that square root. Now I'm squaring the entire left side here, so that's why I put it in parentheses, because everything on this side gets squared. So y is equal to x minus 5 over 3 squared. Don't forget your little inverse symbol on the y. Yeah, you could keep it like this, or if you wanted to, you could square the top and square the bottom, so you could get x minus 5 squared over 9. But I would just say it's almost better just to leave it in parentheses, that way you don't have to worry about like what gets distributed to what. Yes. So I said... Don't look at A or C. I think the questions were just written wrong. But determine if the functions are inverse functions. So how do I determine if these are inverses? If they have the same final answer, but what do I need to do to find that final answer? Combine them. Combine them. So I'm going to take F and plug it into the X in G. So I have g is negative one half times x so times this whole thing negative two x plus six plus three so now we need to simplify here to see what we end up with how would i simplify this i would distribute the one half what is negative one half times negative two So one, positive one x, that would just be x. What's negative one half times six? Negative three. And then plus three, that's the same side. What would I do next? Cancel out the three, so I'm left with x. So we have to do the same thing to the other one and see if we get the same answer. So I'm going to take g and plug it into the x in f. So here I have negative 2 times x, so times my whole other function, negative 1 half x plus 3 plus 6. Now I'm going to simplify. What do I need to do first to simplify? Distribute the 2. So what's negative 2 times negative 1 half? 1, so that would just be x. What's negative 2 times 3? negative 6, and I have that plus 6 on the outside. Anything else we could do? So if we get x and x, and these are the same thing, then yes, they are inverses. What if we got something different? Then they would be not inverses.